Hello everyone. Welcome to the US STEM podcast. I'm your host Mercy and I'm thrilled to have you join us today at the University of Science and Technology Meghalaya. We're committed to exploring fascinating topics and sharing knowledges from our esteemed guests and faculty. So today we have a very special guest with us, Dr. Rodison Thank you, who is an assistant professor from the Department of Zoology USTM. Dr. Rodison Thank you has dedicated his research in the fascinating world of cicadas. So let us dive into the successful project titled Diversity of Cicadas in Meghalaya and across Northeast. So now I would like to welcome our esteemed guest Dr. Rodison Thank you. So Dr. Rodison sir, we welcome you to our show and we are excited to hear from you. Thank you, Mercy Full, for bringing me here. It is an honor and privilege for me to have a talk in this USTM podcast. So, sir, let's kick off our discussion with a broad overview. So, sir, can you start by giving us a brief overview of cicada and what makes this insect so unique? Mm. Cicada is a fascinating insect. It exhibits a diverse range in size, shape, and coloration. A most conspicuous characteristic of cicada is that its ability to produce sound. Other uh, insects also they may produce sound, but their sound they produce they are very weak and feeble and can be heard only through the substrate. But the sound produced by the cicada they are quite loud and can be heard from a long distance. And, and that's why uh, cicada is called as the insect singer. Um, and this sound mechanism is confined only to the male cicada. And that's why it's called, uh, they used to say that happy adults the cicada for they have a voiceless voice. And another uh, most important characteristic of cicada is that, uh, is that it has a long life cycle. Some species of cicada, it, it took up to 4 to up to 17 years, just like the magic cicada that we found in America. And then we have here in Mekalia, this uh, four-year cicada that we, common, that we locally call is Nyangtasir. Uh, this cicada is very uh, unique, it is uh, eaten by the people. It imagine is uh, coincide with the FIFA World Cup. So people locally locally call uh, the cicada as the Nyang World Cup or World Cup cicada. So that's really fascinating. So now can you tell us how have you encountered cicadas? Cicada are cosmopolitan in distribution. It can be found anywhere. It can be found in all over the country, in all over uh, the world, in all continent, but except Antarctica. Uh, these cicada uh, are widely distributed and so far in the world we already record uh, 3,000 species of cicada and in India we have 204 species uh, of cicada and then in Mekhalia we already documented around 60 species of cicada from here. That's a really wonderful thing to know sir. So all I can say is that we are really fortunate enough uh, that you are a part of USTM. And uh, I believe that the students of uh, MSc and BSc, those who are pursuing their degree in the zoology course, they can get access to you and they can work under your guidance. So, so it's really helpful for the students who are studying in the zoology department. So it's really wonderful to know that. So it's really fortunate enough that you're a part of the USTM. And uh, I believe that the students of MSc and BSc who are pursuing their degree in the zoology department um, they can get access to you and they can work under your guidance. So it's really be helpful for the students who are studying in the zoology department. So sir, coming back to our topic, so I'm a bit curious about the practical aspects and about the uh, how have you collected cicadas and about the techniques and tools that you have used in the research. To collect cicada is not an easy task. Uh, you know because cicada, they, uh, they are well adapted for flying but most of species of cicada they used to pitch on the high trees, so to collect that is very difficult. So to, to collect cicada, I use uh, most of the time, I use sweeping net, uh, light trap, then I use sometimes catapult also, but most of the time I used to pick, uh, I used to collect it by hand also. And moreover also, we use this uh, sticky one where we used to put in the edge of the bamboo, then we used to collect the cicada by stick it on on it. Then in, in such a way we can collect cicada. Sir, as far as I know, this cicada has got a bicolor appearance. So according to that, uh, its color it resembles somewhat with butterflies. So is there any similarities 
um, between the butterflies and cicadas in terms of uh, collecting pattern? To collect a uh, butterfly and cicada, they are quite similar. Because why? Uh, cicada and butterfly, they are both attracted to light. Uh, cicada and butterfly, they can be catch by light trapping, and moreover also by using stripping net, then by using this uh, sticky one, by, uh, even a butterfly also we can uh, collect by hand picking. But as far as I know, to collect a uh, cicada is more difficult as to compare to collect butterfly. Because you know, butterfly, they, they used to fly on the surface, they used to come at the land, uh, they used to feed on, they used to come on water. But for cicada, it's very difficult since it's used to pitch the high brand of trees. So, sir, now can you please tell us about the new genus and new species from India? That is a very interesting question. Uh, after years of extensive study and exploration, we collect different species of cicada. This species uh, are our, uh, among these species, 20 species, they are a new record for Mekalia. Seven species, uh, it is the new record for India. And the most fortunate thing we have discovered in this work is that discovery of the new genus, uh, a new species, that is Bequetina bicolor. It is commonly uh, called as the butterfly cicada because it's, uh, it have very rich in coloration and moreover also it have a diverse range in coloration. And uh, discovery of this work is that the discovery of the new genus and new species that is Bequetina bicolor. It is called as the uh, Butterfly cicada because it is a uh, half loss of coloration. And this uh, species, I already published it in Journal of Zutakza, which is the international journal. And another discovery is that uh, of new genus is that Salvagena mirabilis, mirabilis, which I already published in the Journal of Tritinan Taxa. That's really incredible, sir. Sir, as I've known that you are the first person in Meghalaya and across Northeast to discover this new species, which is the seventh species, in relation to the other six species that the other researchers have discovered throughout the Southeast Asia. Sir, now can you please tell us about the methodologies that you have used in your research work and about the approach or towards your research work and about the overall structure? Since cicada is very famous for the sound it produces, so bio, bio study is very important for cicada terminology. So for this, I use Raven Pro software to analyze its sound. Um, and for description uh, study, I did it mapping. I did mapping also. And then uh, I use the geographical software. And for uh, diversity indexes, I use uh, PASS software. And to study in molecular level, I did a uh, DNA bar barcoding, and most of the, of the study were conducted in the field. So what are your future plans and your upcoming projects in the field of research of Cicada? Okay, that is a very interesting question. My future plan is that I want to increase my study area. Right now, I, I documented, I record, it's uh, only for Mechlea, but in the future, I, have to, I want to study uh, Cicada, Cicada diversity from Assam, uh, Mizoram, Nagaland, Arunachal Pradesh, and whole, uh, and whole of East India, and if possible, um, in whole of our country. Sir, that's uh, really inspiring to hear that. Sir, research itself has got its own sets of challenges. So, sir, what were the challenges that you have faced in your research work, and how have you overcome them? As I already mentioned, to collect cigada is not easy task. So to study uh, cicada diversity is, is uh, very difficult. You know, to, uh, to collect cicada from one place to another place, uh, we need a good transportation. And moreover, also to collect, uh, to get permit uh, for collection, I have to take permission from the concerned authorities. These are the main obstacles that I face uh, in, my, in my work. Moreover, also there are so many uh, to, to chase cicada in the wild, for us, it is uh, very uh, difficult because you know there is a lot of poisonous snake, uh, mosquito, then many others harmful uh, insects also is there. Many, uh, so to chase together in the way is very difficult, especially for collection. Sir, after listening to all the obstacles that you have faced and how you have overcame them, sir, it's fit to say that all your hard work and all your pain 
is worth the position that you're holding now. Sir, it sounds like a significant amount of work. So sir, can you tell us how many years did it take to complete this research work? You know, this work is uh, not only me who started this work. Actually, this work is already started by my guide, Professor S.R. Hajong. He already collects some species of cicada around, uh, say for, for around 20 species. But I continued this work uh, after I joined a uh, master's degree in Nehu. And after that, I continued this, uh, this work and collection uh, right from t in the years 2014. And up till here, it will, up till the, now, it will be around seven or eight years. So it takes a long time to complete this work. So now we got to know that it took a lot of years to complete this research work. So if you talk about the Department of Zoology, the department itself has got a lot of facilities to offer. One of the great facilities that the US team has to offer is the Salim Ali Museum of Biological Diversity. So this museum has got a lot of specimens in a preserved form so through which these students can get access to whenever they are in need of. And the specimens which can explore their interest and they can explore their creativity as well. And sir, so through which they can explore their interest. So sir, apart from cicadas, is there any other species that you're interested in? Yes, I want to study and document other insects also, apart from cicada, because there are so many insects uh, that are endemic to this region. And after, uh, and after I document and record all these uh, endemic species, from the east state of uh, India, because this not is uh, India is full is one of the uh, biosphere hotspot in the world. So after uh, documenting and, and describe as new species, I want to deposit it in our museum. I think it will be more helpful for our university. Then, sir, it's gonna be another fascinating topic for the future episodes to come. So, sir, finally, I would like to ask you about the conservation aspects and about the future prospects of cicada and why is it important to study and why is it important to protect these insects? Conservation is very important in this generation because you know uh, many species uh, of insect and other animal has been extinct due to various artificial activity such as deforestation, urbanization, forest fire and agricultural land. So to conserve this uh, biology is very important because biodiversity is, con is considered as a living goal. Because why? Because it provides us a lot of resources and services for the essential of our survival on this earth. Um, you know, uh, so many species of insect, like for example, uh, one species of butterfly is called Kaisar hen. Uh, it is already uh, reported by the British, but now no longer observed or can be seen. Uh, another species of cicada also, that is uh, Mogonia uh, conica, it is reported by the one worker, uh, W.L. Distan, but now, uh, but now it cannot be observed or cannot be found. Why? Because this is, uh, I think, because of extinction. So, conservation is very important in these days. Uh, moreover, also it helps in balancing the nature and climate change resistance. Thank you, sir, for letting us know about the importance of cicada. So, cicadas are unique insects known for their distinctive sound and life cycles and they play a very important role in our ecosystems. Dr. Rodesan work not only highlights the diversity of cicadas but also sheds light on the uh, conservation aspects and future prospects of this captivating creature. I would like to thank Dr. Rodesan sir for sharing his insights and expertise with us today. Thank you so much for joining us in this enlightening discussion. Don't forget to subscribe to USTM podcast. Until next time, stay tuned. Thank you.